I suppose the big question is, can kids understand university uh, level economics? And it, it is a worry that maybe they, they won't be able to grasp it totally, but like anything else, it's how it is taught to them. So if it's simplified down into a language that they can understand and they can, they can run with and add their own to it, I don't see why not. So what we did was we gave four significant economic problems to four primary schools. The four economic issues were the housing crisis, the PCP problem, the war on plastic, and the insurance crisis. So for four weeks we went into these primary schools and taught them university economics. And after four weeks of that program, we came here to the Rochestone Park Hotel, where these children presented the solutions to these issues in front of 400 people. When you're the guinea pig for a project as such, sometimes you might think, well, what if it doesn't work? What if the kids just don't respond to it in the way that they should? Going back there when I would have been in school, initially they just wouldn't have been afforded to us. Well, obviously, it's the first time I've ever heard of economics coming to a primary school. Um, I don't know if the children will be able to grasp the concepts now. It'll depend on the, the issues that, they're, that are given to them. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not too sure if they actually have an awareness of what economics is. Obviously it's something completely new that hadn't been done before. So there's always this slight bit of trepidation as to how is it going to fit in? How are the boys going to react to it? How are the teachers going to react to it? How are we going to fit it in in an already overloaded curriculum? We have children at all different levels and all different abilities. Uh, some children will grasp it faster than, faster than others, but uh, I suppose my main concern is that we try and bring the whole class along um, and not bring the, I suppose, more able, well able kids and leave our kids behind. Well, there's definitely some concerns have come back from the schools themselves. They're, they're naturally enough, they're nervous about this because it hasn't been done before. And we'll all probably still have those concerns coming up until the final night, no matter how well the four weeks go within the school, there's no guarantee on the night it's all going to go swimmingly well, it's not going to go perfectly. First day today here now going to the schools and um, just be leaving the credit union here now in a couple of minutes before going to Skull Bar and Nafa in Monkstown um, and fingers crossed we'll get their first of our schools off to a good start. I'm just not really sure at what level to pitch the classes. Perfect. We'll just have to figure it out. I'll be bringing a few of you up here whoop, to show how the whole thing works, and we'll be have we'll be we'll be learning about um, the market of the insurance industry. Of course you doubt yourself in these moments, but all you can do, I suppose, is back the process. And you kind of keep reminding yourself that if you meet children with positivity and respect, they will always reciprocate. Couldn't the, like, the big insurance companies like just come together and say, when we raise the, um, the insurance premiums, and they get more money and wouldn't lose. Okay, uh, wait a sec. So you just asked, couldn't all the uh, companies come together, raise the prices, make more money, and they wouldn't lose? And Barra, what did you say? It's collusion. What's it called? It's collusion. It's called collusion. Absolutely brilliant. That's called collusion. So from there, you can really begin to build from that point going forward, and start to teach them real economics. So. Lauren, our on post, will remain on her own. Monopoly. Oh. <laughs> Thanks a million. Do you all understand? Yeah. Monopoly. OK, say Monopoly. Don't, you don't have to, it was only a joke. Right, OK. Just f f going into the classroom and the buzz. I mean, we teach things day in, day out, and you know, you're teachers and you're trying to make things interesting, and some people get it, some people don't get it, and you'll interest some kids. But when we went in, this was something almost, it came in from outside, 
and the kids just grasped the buzz. It was just a feeling of the buzz in the room. So if the British sterling continues to get cheaper, will second-hand car prices in Ireland A, go up, B, go down, C, stay the same? Mm. 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 All right. <laughs> OK. And even when we were doing the graphs and the equilibrium, the understanding they had of it was incredible. On the board here, we have the demand curve for houses, the supply curve for houses, and the equilibrium price is 300,000 euro. If the price was a million, nobody would buy it. They're peer learning, and that's the most valuable learning that anyone can have. You know, when they learn from each other, it's much, much stronger. Answer me this, in an oligopoly, if more firms joined, would the prices go up or would the prices go down? they'd go down. Brilliant. Just with a show of hands, if you know, does anyone know what the land value tax is? OK. Jack? If you own the land, you have to pay tax on the value of it. Excellent. This is fantastic for the boys. It's giving them real-life experience on real-world issues and letting them work collaboratively together to see if they can come up with solutions. Tonight, 10, 11 and 12 year olds will be presenting university level economics to over 350 people in Roshan Park Hotel. Um, I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't a little bit nervous about it, but I have 100% confidence in the kids. I think it will do wonders for their confidence if they're able to stand up in front of a room of two, 300 children or uh, adults as well and able to get their message across um, to everyone in the, in the audience. Is it really possible to prepare an 11-year-old to present economics in front of a room of 400 people? Of course it isn't. All you can do is offer them your every support and then hope that on the night it, it all goes to plan. These four, if they came back, which we know is actually six, it's six in reality, these, now you need to get back all the money you lost before, don't you? So we're going to up our prices. You're going up your prices. Way absolutely brilliant. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you all to the first evening of the primary school economic challenge. I believe if economics was taught at this age and made compulsory in the curriculum, I believe it would not only change our country forever, but it would set an example for the world. Firstly, I have to say and commend every single one of the students as you're you're an absolute honour to work with over the last four weeks. I think our, our future is in safe hands when I'm hearing and seeing some of these ideas. And um, look, Douglas Credit Union is absolutely delighted to be a part of this initiative. So thank you very much. Welcome the first school up on the stage. It's Wales Skull Nidouglisha with the war on plastic. It is now estimated that by the year 2050 there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Single-use plastic in particular is a serious problem. Two million coffee cups are given out daily in Ireland. So single-use plastic is plastic you can only use once, like straws, plastic bottles and packaging on sweets. Economics is the only way to win this plastic war. Provide economic incentives like discounts for using plastic again and again. In 2002, Ireland launched Plastic Bag Levy. And it decreased the usage by a billion plastic bags. And note this, Ireland was the first country to come up with this idea. And it also inspired a lot more copycat schemes. 70% of all plastic ends up on sea floor. This number just has to go down. Otherwise, we will all be swimming in plastic, not just the fishes. You are absolutely fantastic. Well done. Welcome to our project on PCP. PCP stands for Personal Contract Plans. It is a care finance agreement 
between a car buyer and a garage. It, the garage sells the car to the bank and the bank lends the car to the buyer for a period of time. Ireland is relatively new to PCP, yet Irish banks already hold 1.5 billion in PCP debt. Our neighbours in the UK hold 67 billion worth of PCP debt. In America, where all of this started, PCB debt currently stands at 1.3 trillion US dollars. So that's what you call a debt cycle. Is PCP the next great financial crisis? The reason we may wonder this is that banks are entirely liable if the PCP market collapses. What you're about to see next is a presentation brought to you by an 11-year-old, Noah Morris from Shambhali National School. It compares the 2008 mortgage crisis with that of the present PCP problem. In 2008, the homeowner was looking to buy a house. The auctioneer would sort the homeowner with the house and link the homeowner with the bank, the lender. The bank would ring up the investor and see does he want to uh, buy the mortgage off the bank. In 2008 though what happened was the homeowner couldn't pay back his bills. The investor get, wasn't getting his repayments back. The bank just went out of business because all the houses were coming back at the same time. Then the auctioneer was just left because he had no customers or no bank. Do we really want to continue as an economy that would let all of this happen all over again? Unfortunately, this is all starting to look a little bit familiar. So the car buyer is looking to buy a car, so it'll go to the car dealership. The car dealership will uh, sell the car to the bank. The bank will sell it back to the car buyer uh, for a certain period of time. And then the investor could ring the bank or the bank could ring the investor and say, do you want to buy the loan? Sometimes what can happen is the car buyer can't pay his uh, bills back. The bank gets the car back, so they go out of business as well. The investor doesn't get its money, so he goes out as well. And then the car dealership just has no customers or no bank. we do about it? One, put a cap on PCP loans. End bank bailouts. This creates moral hazard because we keep bailing out the banks so they're not looking to find the um, problem that causes them to go bankrupt. Uh, three, put rules in place to limit the banks selling on PCP loans to investors. Educate people on what exactly PCP is the liability on the care dealership rather than the bank. Thank you very much for listening to our project. Well done all of you, outstanding. The third school that is going to come up here onto the stage is Skull Baranefa for Monkstown. Fifth class school Barnefa would like to thank Gary and Gary for our help for making this project happen. We would like to welcome you to our Irish insurance crisis presentation. The Irish insurance industry is an oligopoly. An oligopoly is where a small amount of companies control the market. These companies set barriers to entry. The price of insurance premiums went up by 70% between 2015 and 2017. There are six major players in the Irish insurance industry, but get this, in Ireland motor insurance is a legal requirement, meaning if they set a price, we by law have to pay it. Whiplash is an injury sustained to the neck in car crashes. It is almost impossible to assess and that's why 80% of all motor claims are whiplash. This person recently suffered a serious whiplash injury. <laughs> Solutions. First of all, it should be mandatory to take a medical. 
When you make a personal injury claim, you do not have to take a medical check. Claimants must pay a fee when making a claim to help fund the Guard of Fraud Unit. Remove the barriers to entry that new competitors can enter the market so the premiums will come down. Irish court payouts are huge. They are 4.4 times higher than in the UK. If you lie in court, you should be sent to jail. That way it will reduce people making false claims. Well done, Stilvani from Armstrong. Outstanding. Fifth class. Amazing. The next school up here is St. Columbus Boys National School from Douglas. Now this is my own uh, former primary school. So the economic problem that St. Columbus looked at was the housing crisis. There are 183,000 abandoned houses in Ireland. There are currently 10,000 people homeless in Ireland. There are 100,000 people on the housing list. However, there was only 700 houses built by the local housing authorities last year. There is a chronic issue with land hoarding in Ireland. Land hoarding is where land is left idle and its value keeps rising even though no contribution has been made by the landowner. The best solution is land value tax, LVT. A land value tax is a tax on the value of land. What would happen if we had the land value tax in Ireland? On the left axis, we have the price of the houses, which spans from 100,000 euro to 500,000 euro. And on the bottom line, we have the quantity, which spans from 100 to 500 houses. This is the demand curve. When the pr price of the house is lower, the amount demanded is higher. And when the price is higher, the demand is lower. This is the supply curve. When the price is low, the amount supplied is low, and when the price is high, the amount supplied is high because people will build for more money. In this example, we have an equilibrium at 300,000 euro and 300 houses built. If we had a land value tax in Ireland, the supply curve would shift to the right and the price of the houses would go down and the amount supplied would be a bigger. This could solve the housing crisis. What are the solutions? Properly re regulate the rental market so landlords cannot constantly increase rent rates. So we need to put rules for landlords so they can't keep upping and upping the price to suit themselves more than the customer. People who sold mortgages that they shouldn't have been given, these should be cancelled. This is the housing crisis by St. Columbus Boys National School. Thank you for listening. Just before we finish, I'm just gonna say one or two things. When I was growing up um, in Douglas, you know when you, you grow up in Western culture and you look at the TV and you look at the movie screens and you see America and the UK and all these things, you think, oh, it must be amazing to live in those places. But what I realized down through the years is when you live in those places, it's so hard to get anything done. Why is that? It's because those places are huge. In Ireland, we need to rejoice in the fact that we are a very small nation because we can exert massive change in our lifetimes and we can do it in a very short time frame. It's something we need to be aware of because it gives us a benefit over the rest of the world and if we put something like this in place, we were giving people of all ages a great footing in their lifetime. So I would like to just thank all of you, Roachstone Park Hotel, the four schools, all the teaching staff, the credit union. Thank you and safe home. I suppose at Douglas Credit Union, we've been working with local primary schools here for, for many years. 
and this year we decided to do things a little different. We brought it to a new level and looking back on it, it's been, it was the best thing we ever did because the kids are going to be now more aware of the community and everything around them from a, an economic point of view. So for us that's fantastic because they're more aware of their community and we're all about the community here in, in Douglas Credit Union. It's like a snowball effect. This is their start point for economics. I'm sure when they go home and driving home this evening if they listen to the radio, they might have another economic issue that Aaron faces for me tomorrow and that'll be another point of discussion. This was a, a completely new concept for us, something that we wouldn't necessarily do or fit into our schedule, but we did and I think the classes on the whole benefited hugely from it. Sometimes we are guilty as adults of placing our own limitations on them and I think very often if you give children the freedom and scope, well then the sky's the limit. It's fascinating and I would strongly urge and recommend the Irish Education System, the Department of Education, to consider this as a serious option going forward. Yeah, I think the main thing we took from it was, you know, to have a bit more faith in the kids. So sometimes the people of Ireland can be reluctant to accept new things. Um, and you could have the idea of why you're teaching that in school. But um, it kind of, the proof is in the pudding, really. They, they did have an understanding of it. Were you surprised by their ability to uptake economics? No, not at all. They are so capable that giving them economic problems to find solutions for is something that they thrive on. If I'm being honest, I was truly surprised by how much I learned throughout this entire process. When it started out, I was thinking, you know, we'll go into the primary schools and we'll, we'll spoon feed economics and, and make it very childlike to enable teaching and learning and so on. But by the end of the four weeks, I was genuinely running out of things to teach them. I think we should realize that there's no end to what you can achieve with children because their minds are like laser beams.